Since many of our campuses have been built, the importance of science education K-12 has increased. The rigor and expectations are far greater than ever before. For the past several years, the district has worked hard to efficiently utilize local funds to provide opportunities for safe and engaging science experiences for our students. These departments continue to focus on this work by utilizing local funds to address storage and safety upgrades in all science classrooms. The average age of BISD campuses is 37 years. Our campuses were built when science education looked very different than it does today. High school students must now take four to five science courses to complete graduation requirements as opposed to one or two science courses just seven years ago. These increased expectations require additional space for both labs and storage of equipment. In fifth grade, students take their first science star test. And even though it's given in fifth grade, it's really a comprehensive assessment that tests students' science achievements in kindergarten through fifth grade. This assessment requires students to apply their lab experiences in order to successfully answer increasingly rigorous questions. In elementary school, a student's experience should include 80 to 50 percent hands-on investigations year after year, which help develop problem-solving and critical thinking skills. This is essential for building a strong foundation for their science work in middle school and beyond. I've been teaching in Birdville ISD for 21 years, and over the course of that time, I've seen a lot of changes to science instruction. The standards are getting increasingly more rigorous, and we are now required to use 40% of our time doing lab activities. I teach in a 51-year-old building, and it can't meet the technological needs of today as far as outlets and, and room design d designed around smart boards where all students are able to see everything that they need to see. When doing, um, when doing labs with about 30 students in a regular small classroom, I take on a personal liability for their safety. And um, there are some things that we just can't do because of the amount of space we have. Our storeroom is so full of materials that we can't even get to everything we have and we can't find what we need. Things are stacked on top of each other. It's not a safe environment to prepare chemical labs, uh, to set up, to clean up. Uh, it's basically become a big storage closet rather than a prep area and workroom. We need more space in the classrooms and we need more space for storage so that we can organize our materials, know what we have, be able to lay hands on them when we need them, and make the most use of the resources that we do have. I've been teaching science for seven years now. Currently, I'm teaching in a building that's close to half a century year old. Um, back then, that was a great facility for our students. Um, however, the current students that we have um, are reaching us in a larger capacity. We have more students per the classroom. We have more of a technology need. The size of the classroom um, is really a constraint for us as teachers in this building because our students are not able to practice safe labs. We, need, um, we have less access to our materials. Um, additionally, the Birdville me uh, mission statement is for staff and students to practice in a safe environment. Um, and we're not really getting that experience here because we're not providing any kind of lab setting for our students. According to the Texas Education Administrative Code, my classroom should be 1,750 square feet to accommodate my 30 students. However, my classroom is only 625 square feet, which is roughly three times too small to meet the code. And it's shown through research that classrooms that are reduced in size will actually have a significant increase in the amount of incidents and dangerous accidents that will occur due to hazards in the laboratory. All right, and so one thing that we really struggle with here is that these classrooms have no running water. So the students that are trying to prepare for the biology EOC really struggle with having some of the lab necessities they need to prepare them. Um, and that's also needed in just our chemistry, our physics, and our IPC labs. And that on top of the limited amount of storage space that we have, um, we're oftentimes having to run lab equipment in between classrooms. Um, they're oftentimes spread out all amongst the um, 
floor, which makes it very, very difficult and it's not readily available for our students. So I'm actually a first year teacher. This is my first time teaching. Um, I just gr recently graduated from college at Texas A&M. I was often all the time in labs. I was consistently working in the labs and I saw what the kids are up against when they go to college and teaching juniors and seniors. They're right on the cu cusp and they're about to get there. And I'm really worried that they're not con prepared for the amount of lab that they will see in college and what they might experience and how in-depth things get because we're limited on the number on the space and what we're capable of doing with them due to the classroom size. I'm forced to do a lot of household chemistry, baking soda and vinegar kind of labs, uh, elementary and middle school. I can't do a lot of hazardous uh, materials in here because I don't have sinks or a water supply for washing up. I don't have ventilation in the room. So the students aren't getting the full experience of chemistry in the classroom. So I teach in a lab like this and it's been here for a few years um, at Haltom High School and we're able to do lots of different activities here, we're able to rotate around the room, we're able to um, just have really great lab experiences that really enrich our children and really provide them with educational opportunities that really help them be successful so they can really put something tangible to something that's really difficult um, that really aids in their learning. We've got other people in our building that are in tiny little shoebox classrooms and they're just having a really hard time um, pulling these types of activities off and it's very much hindering the education that these kids are walking away from and the equity is just not fair. It's so hard to, to plan activities and plan labs when there's just such a huge discrepancy in what our actual lab rooms look like. The importance of science cannot be emphasized too strongly. It is a subject for one thing that students are very interested in and intrigued by. They love science. It's about our world. It's about our, uh, our, our planet, our earth. And, and in order to set students up for the opportunities to really learn by doing, well then that requires of course well-trained professionals. But to really retain those professionals, we need to provide them with the resources and the facilities that are needed so kids can construct meaning by doing and by asking those, uh, those questions about their environment, about their world. And then through investigations and experiments, then they begin to construct the meaning for themselves. It's not just memorizing. And then on top of that, what we do know about our changing world is that the, the future um, and just within a few short years, the next four years, Texas is going to lead the nation in terms of STEM jobs, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. These are the jobs of the future. And for Birdville students to be competitive and not to be left out, then we have got to equip them with the, uh, the background for learning science, learning mathematics, and being able to actually apply their learning in real world situations where our students will come out uh, ready and prepared to go into the workforce, to go into college and to uh, be there for those jobs that are, that are going to be awaiting for them. So that is a real, I can't think of a better reason to say we need to emphasize science in Burbell ISD and to do that we need to provide those facilities and that equipment and those resources that are so desperately needed.